Welcome everyone to the Capital Markets Mortgage Subgroup Meeting. Uh, before we get started, I did want to express our appreciation to Vipin, the Chairman of the Capital Markets Special Interest Group, and Karen, our hyperledger point of contact for their ongoing support and making this, this whole community possible. So with that, why don't we just go ahead and move forward. Okay. Um, before we get started, please note that this meeting is being recorded and is under the umbrella of the Hyperledger Foundation. So we ask that everyone abide by the antitrust policy in the code of contract, excuse me, code of conduct. For the antitrust policy, avoid discussions of company specific pricing, products, and projects. Don't make negative remarks about other companies or products. And for the code of conduct, treat each other with respect never discriminate and communicate constructively. We fully support Hyperledger's policy of openness, equity, and inclusion. And for new participants, we welcome you. And if you'd like, please introduce yourself in the chat and let us know if there's any specific areas of interest. <clears throat> Here is today's agenda. Um, we've already done the welcome, housekeeping. I uh, will go through Hyperledger community information, provide a state of the blockchain in the mortgage industry group. We'll have a demonstration of the Home Lending Pal application, and then we'll go over any future topics and Q and A. So we covered this slide last time, but I think it's worth revisiting. Since you're on this call, you and your company are somewhere along this path of the blockchain journey. You may be looking at different technologies, building a blockchain application, looking for customers for your blockchain app, or maybe just taking your first step. We're all on the same blockchain path, but we may be at different points along that path. This group is intended to help everyone on their blockchain journey. some community information that we wanted to pass along. Hyperledger <clears throat> is launching the Hyperledger Challenge, and this is something that's really exciting, uh, and they've been um, communicating. It, it's intended to harness the power of different communities to ideate, develop, and launch innovative solutions develop using open source technology. Any innovation that advances the current state of the enterprise uh, distributed uh, ledger technology is eligible for the Hyperledger Challenge. And they, I believe they're also looking for judges to be part of the Hyperledger Challenge. So please follow the link. Uh, I think this is a great idea to, to help the community and to really distribute the Hyperledger knowledge. Okay, I'm not gonna go over the next couple of slides. They do contain information that provides links. It talks about Hyperledger and training, how to create an LFID. We're including this in here. We'll always include it in our presentation just for informational purposes and for people that are new, just to make it easier for them to join. Okay, with that, I would like to introduce James Hendrick, who's going to talk about the state of blockchain. James? Marvin, thank you very much. Appreciate the introduction. Um, let's go ahead and move on to the first slide. So welcome, everybody. I'm James Hendrick. This is our wiki slide. You guys have seen it before. Um, just a couple of quick updates. I did drop in the chat, the link at the very bottom. So if you want it for quick access, feel free to access the chat, click on that link, and then save it as a favorite. Couple quick updates. We're continuing to add research and uh, article information to the site. So over on the right hand side, you'll notice the updated research articles. Some of those articles we're going to be covering today. If you, when you're on the site, you scroll down in the lower right, you'll actually find some additional research articles. But I also wanted to highlight over on the left on the menu, we've actually added a third submenu page. Um, for previous mortgage blockchain articles. That's actually a link that'll take you to a page for all of our old articles. You'll still be able to reference the information there. 
The uh, articles that are on the right-hand side of our wiki, those are going to represent more of the last couple of meetings, and then those will transition also over to the uh, previous mortgage um, page as we continue to add content. So do take a look at the site. There's a lot of useful information out there, including some of the topics we're about to cover. Moving on to the next slide. So this is a slide that we've used in previous presentations and we've continued to add. Um, it shows the global mortgage blockchain activity that's going on both at the international level as well as the US level. A lot of the articles in prior to 2022, we have previously spoken about um, and or are available on the site. Taking a look at you know, 2022, we are gathering new articles this year. We've already got a dozen or more that we've collected. Here's four of the topics that we're gonna uh, talk about today. Two in the global space, one out of Canada, and one an overall global uh, analysis of blockchain. And then in the US space, we're gonna talk a little bit about the USDF consortium, as well as a, uh, a FinTech company that is releasing their first crypto mortgage uh, um, space. Again, for the 2021 articles, if you're interested in those or any of the previous, do visit our wiki site for that previous page. Moving right along, Marvin. All right, so this we thought was an excellent graphic to share with the group. Um, you know, first to note, it is focused really on crypto, but it's an excellent representation of internationally what is going on in the finance industry for major in institutions whether that's in the DeFi space, the crypto investing or trading space, blockchain transactions. You can see J JP Morgan's kind of taking the lead in the stablecoin space. Really, we wanted to share this with you because it represents that most of the major financial institutions are actively involved in blockchain development of one sort or another. Heavy on the crypto, but we're seeing more and more industries, including mortgage, that are starting to expand out into blockchain as well as the crypto industries. So we wanted to give you guys a good overall overview presentation of if you haven't, you know, boarded the blockchain yet, the blockchain train yet, this is a good time to get on board because as you can see, all the major financial institutions have already left the station. Moving on to our global mortgage blockchain industry. So talking about a couple of things going on in the global industry. First off, we've got a British based company, um, or excuse me, a Canadian based company out of British Columbia called TerraZone Technologies. TerraZone is an Ethereum based uh, metaverse platform. It's housed on Decentraland. And they are actually offering real estate that's represented in the metaverse as a non-fungible token. Clients can actually go into TerraZone and they can look at various offerings and listings, everything from land size, location, prefab built elements. Um, the client goes through a mortgage contract process. Once everything's signed, TerraZone actually approves the mortgage application on the property. The land NFT is then held by TerraZone as the registered owner until the client pays the loan back. Um, TerraZone, though, does grant deployment rights so that the clients can build on their virtual land. Everything from, you know, building a property to running a digital storefront to, you know, hosting a company office, they can pretty much do whatever they want with their uh, NFT land. And like any traditional mortgage, the client's going to continue to make monthly payments until it's paid off. At the time it's paid off, the virtual land NFT is then fully transferred over to the client. You know, we wanted to highlight this article because it's demonstrating an entirely new economy is starting to develop in the uh, blockchain and the crypto space. Um, and that economy is going to be hitting mortgage as well as a variety of other industries. Also in the global market blockchain space, CB Insights this month um, released a fantastic analysis on the overall blockchain development across the global scale in 2021. You know, some of the highlights that come out of this, um, in 2021, over 25 billion was invested in global blockchain funding. Um, 15 billion of that was just through mega round funding. And of the 25 billion, over 50 over 50% 50 of it, 56%, was actually in the US share of that global funding. 
We also, you know, the article does break it down by uh, different industries as well as geographic uh, demographics. Um, one of the interesting things I found out of this article is in 2021, growth in the decentralized finance space increased by 94%. Um, it is projected that 2022, these numbers are gonna be even larger. This is a fairly extensive analysis. We do have it available on our wiki. It's on the uh, right-hand side if you scroll all the way down into the research section. Um, it is about 170 pages long, so there is quite a bit of information in it. Most of it is graphs and charting. But I highly recommend if you're interested in what's going on in the, the blockchain environment globally, take a look at that uh, analysis. There's a lot of great information in there. Moving on to the US sector, so a couple of things to highlight. We had mentioned in last month's meeting, the USDF consortium. It actually was announced the day before our meeting. So we didn't have a lot of significant information. Um, we do have some more information to share with you today. So, you know, as it says, the USDF consortium, it's a member-based association of FDIC insured banks. The current members include New York Community Bank, NBH Bank, First Bank, Webster Bank, Synovus, Figure and GM FinPop as investors. Um, they are looking to significantly grow their membership of FDIC insured banks throughout 2022 and beyond. So where the USDF um, differs uh, from other types of stable coins, you know, a couple of the highlights, it's minted exclusively by banks. It's redeemable for on a one-on-one -on -one basis for cash from any of the consortium members. A very interesting fact about it is the coin is programmed to prevent transfers to wallets that haven't undergone a bank compliant review process. So while you can get these new coins through the USDF consortium and you can trade them amongst the, the members or use them for transaction amongst the members, you can't actually transfer it from your wallet to a wallet that has not gone through a bank compliant review process. And they're really looking to address the consumer protection and regulatory, regulatory concerns of non-bank issued stable coins. If you're looking for more information about the USDF consortium, you can go to usdfconsortium.com. Um, they've got some you know, additional information on their site as well as the process for uh, FDIC insured banks to actually enroll into the USDF consortium. And then also in the crypto space from the Dodd-Frank update, there's a fintech company called Milo. They are claiming to offer the first crypto mortgage in the US. Clients will actually be able to use their crypto assets to pledge Bitcoin in order to purchase property. They'll then qualify for a low interest rate 30 year crypto mortgage. Financing is available up to 100% of the purchase price with no cash down, um, which is a nice feature. And this really allows the client to be able to own their Bitcoin while they can continue to diversify into real estate, all while keeping that potential price appreciation of both of the assets. The thing to note about this uh, crypto mortgage, it's not yet available. Milo is planning on releasing it, hopefully in the earlier part of 2022. So more information to come on this one. Um, we've actually found several articles out here about Milo and their crypto mortgage. Um, these articles and others, as I mentioned, are all available on the wiki, so do come and check it out. Also, I'd like to encourage uh, the members of this community. We do have a, you know, a considerable more analysis. Some's available on the site, some we don't have posted on the site. 2021 alone, we found probably over five dozen uh, different articles and reference information. Here in 2022, there's already been over a dozen uh, different articles and research points that we found that we're gathering as well. So if you're interested in additional information, please feel free to reach out to me direct, to reach out to us through the community. And or if you are finding information out there, um, please pass it along. We'd like to put it as part of our research. And it may also be a potential one of the you know, articles that we're highlighting in these monthly presentations. That is it for the, the global coverage of what's going on in blockchain. I will pass it back to Marvin to introduce our guest speaker today.
Thanks, James. Uh, that's some um, excellent information. I'm still trying to get my mind around using a mortgage to buy property in the metaverse. Yeah. Hey, um, I'd like to introduce uh, our speaker today, uh, Maria Munaro. She is a blockchain architect for Home Lending Pal. She has over 20 years of experience conceptualizing and designing solutions with a special focus in government and banking. Before Home Lending Pal, Maria was a client architect and blockchain leader for RBM, excuse me, IBM in Argentina. So Maria, take it away. Hi Marvin, thank you. <clears throat> Let me share my, my presentation. There, so can you see my screen? Yes. Good. Um, so um, I work at Home Lending Pal. What is uh, Home Lending Pal's objective? Um, what we're trying to do is be able to provide a platform um, that can um, help both borrowers and lenders meet in, in a fair way, okay? Um, what is currently um, happening? Um, usually we have to, we are sharing personal information and um, it, that we could consider private and maybe not necessary to be shared. And um, how are we, how are we um, sure about how that is being handled? And the mortgage in industry, you can see a lot of um, different things happening. Um, for example, Usually, um, it turns out that these are all studies that you can um, look at um, and find that, for example, women are much better payers of mortgages than men are. And yet, women pay, on average, a higher percentage interest rate than men do, even though um, they, um, they are better payers for those mortgages, right? Um, and then you have um, issues with people that um, are the same sex. If they are the same sex, usually they are less riskier, but they end up um, not being as likely to um, obtain a mortgage compared to uh, a couple that is not of the same sex. The same happens with um, minorities, for example, a black minority, that there is, um, what you find is that there is, um, a, you could say a certain bias um, that <clears throat> people from minority groups or um, women find it much harder to be able to obtain the same conditions um, that uh, someone um, that another person could uh, obtain. Okay, so our objective is to try to help turn this around. Okay, if, if for, and one of the things that we have to think about is what is that sensitive data about ourselves that we share that could unintentionally generate this uh, bias? And we have the ones that are usually considered are race sex, age, and ethnicity. So much so that there are regulations that currently um, require that lenders upfront obtain these values, which is quite a, a, a bit of, um, you're, you're asking people to ask those questions of what you are trying to avoid having as a bias in the system. So you're asking people to obtain that piece of information and, and but then um, you want to be able to value if they um, are introducing bias or not based on that. Um, but these are not only um, uh, focuses of sensitive data because, for example, um, my, I could not be sharing my race, my sex, my age, or my ethnicity. But if I just gave you my name, Maria Monaro, you probably might guess at least three of those. Okay, we might not guess my not be able to guess my age, but you probably would be able to guess my sex, my ethnicity and my race. Okay, so even our names can uh, in some way um, introduce bias. And if I am not the only one that's applying for the mortgage, but I'm applying with a partner, even the information of my partner could um, could also 
introduce some type of bias because if it's also considered a female, okay, so when they were the same sex, and then we'll go into the issue that I mentioned before of the same sex. The same can happen with your address, obviously with your zip code. With your zip code, you can, you can find out if someone is coming from a wealthy um, area or is coming from a not so wealthy. And just because of that zip code, you could start inferring a lot of information, okay? That could be true or not, and that's the issue. So what we are trying to do is to be able to create a platform where your identity can be um, um, secure. And, and one of the issues that you have in, currently in, in the um, process when you're applying for a loan is that the, uh, the loan officer that is um, helping you out is actually starts asking you for a lot of different pieces of paper and you have to go this way and you have to go this other way. And you end up not knowing how much information you have to share. And also the, the, the lender has to sometimes has to double check that information because we are still, this is still a paper-based industry. So a lot of that information is, okay, we need you to give us a bank statement, the original piece of paper, or print out from your uh, home banking. You have to print it out and present it as a piece of paper and they still will, will want to double check to be sure if that's true. So that ends up making that this process takes up a, a lot more time. And that might be one of the reasons why sometimes people focus on certain types of, um, <clears throat> of conditions of the, of, the, of, the, of the different applicants, just because they think that the person with those conditions might be much um, quicker to be able to get the loan than someone that doesn't apply with those conditions. So what we are trying to do is actually be able to help the borrower before they submit their application to create a better portfolio of themselves, okay? To be able to present themselves in a way that is gonna uh, um, look much more agreeable to the lender. And that way um, facilitate that the process, instead of taking months, it could potentially be done in a week, okay? Um, the other thing we want to try to prove is that if all of us have the same face, if all of us present the same characteristics that um, in regards with race, sex, age, and ethnicity, then the, the, the lender will, what we can help, we will help the lender be able to prove that they aren't discriminating based on that, on those pieces of information, but maybe that borrower is not, um, he doesn't have the correct credit score to be able to um, receive the, the type of loan that they, that they want, okay? Um, as I mentioned, some of these, um, some of the steps that you have to go through in the mortgage um, process were implemented because of um, trying to avoid these, uh, this, the, the use of this spice or because technology didn't allow for any other way of obtaining that information, okay? So um, we are trying to change that and be able to bring more transparency and also trust among the different um, participants in the ecosystem. And you have to consider it's not only the borrower and the lender, okay? You also have credit report agencies, you have the bank where I have my um, savings and my checking account. You also have government institutions. You also have NGOs that help the, the borrowers. So there's a lot of different participants um, acting in the ecosystem. How are we trying to help the banks or the lenders per se? Well, if we are able to um, help the borrowers create that better portfolio, using responsible AI, this will also help the um, underwriting process because we're gonna be able to present a, a, a package, a, 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 a group of documentation that the underwriters are going to be able to check and um, pass on much, um, much quicker. So um, this will help approve the ratings that, they, uh, that the banks have to be able to um, approve or, or deny a, a loan, okay? We, and I, I, we are not making the decision for the bank. We are just helping the borrower. Um, it's, it's as if you were going out on a, on a date 
And it's not the same when a friend tells you, hey, no, that shirt doesn't look really good on you. Why don't you wear this other sh shirt? It's just to you, you're just changing the shirt. Doesn't mean that the outcome from the date is gonna be better, but you got a better chance of it, betting, of, of it being better, okay? It's not the same going to a date in your PJs and it might be just dressing up a bit, right? It, 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 so that is the, the, um, in, in a very um, light way what we're trying to do, right? We are using um, blockchain because this is a very important process where there's a lot of people that are interested in how it is going on and it's very regulated. So the, um, the use of blockchain <clears throat> will bring this transparency that is necessary for everyone to be able to um, understand what is, is happening currently, okay? Um, when, we, when I say that um, we help the borrower beforehand, this means that um, we tell them, hey, look, if um, this is how um, this is your how your, your your credit is structured currently, you know if you went out less, dined out less, just one, maybe one. If you go out four times, you go out three times a week to dine out. Um, that would improve your um, credit position so much, and that would mean that you would be able to apply to this type of loans or to be able to obtain the. Um, financials necessary to be able to buy this home that you want. Okay, so um, we, and, and it, we only and we also help them consider not only um, what they have to improve, but it, when they're going to purchase that home, what are all the different costs that might not be hidden, but we might not be as a borrower. We and because we are not as um, knowledgeable in 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 the area in in that subject matter, we don't know all the different things. And once we apply and we get the loan, then we realize, oh, but I also had to pay for this. Oh, but I also had to pay for this. Well, if I knew I had to pay for all of this, these different items beforehand, then I would be much more prepared and, and, and would be able um, to solve everything, wouldn't be so stressed. Now, one of the things that we, um, uh, we started looking at when we um, approached this from a technology perspective is that you could consider all of those different pieces of paper that you present as a credential. And what is a credential? A credential is like your driver's license. Okay, what does your driver's license have? It's the subject, in this case, a driver's license. It says who was the one that issued that driver's license, the um, city, the state, whatever it is. And it would um, show why it was that um, I was assigned that credential. Okay, now, as I said, a, a driver's license. We also have my debit card, my credit card. Okay, there, we have different types of, of, of credentials that we can that we currently have and we currently use and we keep in our wallets. Um, <clears throat> the fact is that we actually no one can actually be uh, or certify if they're actually true. I mean, you have a lot of movies that show that the driver's license or something or is an item that you can a type of credential that you can obtain relatively not so hard and, and, and present it at different um, places. So how could someone that is receiving this um, credential, and you have to think that if you, when you pre present that credential to a, uh, another party, they're actually seeing all the information there and you might not want them to be able to see all of the information because it's, not, it's actually none of their business to be able to see that information. For example, at a bar, they even know when you were born, when they actually need to know if you're over 21 or not. They don't need to know when you were born, right? Um, so that ha helps bring in the concept of digital credential. And what's the difference between a digital credential and a credential? That the digital credential, I can immediately verify who, that, the, the, who the issuer of this credential was. And, it, and that issuer does not necessarily have to be online. So I don't have to call him up. I have a repository or I have a, a network where I can verify that, okay, this credential was issued by this organization. Then it's up to me to decide if I wanna trust that organization or not. But I can verify that that credential um, was, uh, is valid, okay? And hasn't been obviously tampered with. Um, as a as a person that has that is a holder of a credential because I have it in my wallet, I can present it to multiple different parties. It's mine. It's my information, and I'm the one. I'm the, the the person that is holding it, and I'm going to present it 
to whomever I want, okay? So with that, we are um, rethinking what the mortgage process um, could look like, okay? Um, as I mentioned, we usually, uh, we have, we, the regulation today re um, requires that um, when a person applies for a, a submits an application, you have to ask them what their race, their sex, their age, and their ethnicity is. Um, what we are um, <clears throat> proposing is that, yes, we ask that information, but we do not share it with any of the potential lenders. We will only share it once a decision, a positive or a negative decision has been arrived at. That way the lender, since this is going through a whole digital process, they will only be able to decide if I, if they are interested or not, and if I'm worthy or not of, the, of that loan using my, what, um, my assets, um, my asset report, what my, uh, my score is, and whatever other piece of information, hard information about myself they might um, need, okay? Um, <clears throat> this would alleviate the uh, so, so part of the, of the load that the lender has to be of all the um, different checkpoints that they have to put, uh, put to be able to ensure that they, since they actually don't know what my race or my sex or my ethnicity is, they could, um, they can um, demonstrate that they are not introducing bias in, in a certain way. And by using digital credentials, they can, we're also helping them with the underwriting process because it's much easier for them to verify, okay, yes, this is, uh, the FICO score was generated by Experian, by Equifax, by whomever, and okay, yes, I can see that this was issued by Experian, okay, I don't have to recheck it to be able to obtain it. If I have a bank statement, okay, I can see that this was generated by this bank. Okay, I don't need to um, go and ask and knock the door of the bank to be able to ensure if that was generated by that bank or not. Um, who are cur currently um, members that are joining the, are we're a bit, yes, our, our pilot, but we are actually, the slide is not, um, not so new. Um, our, our platform, we have um, these different organizations, um, Flagstar, CUNA Mutual, um, um, Experian, Equifax. And we are talking with different um, government organizations to ensure that uh, they are aware of, of what technology can help you do and um, how they also could benefit because probably they don't know that someone is, is interested, how long someone takes until they present all the information, okay? And why are they taking so, so long? So they could benefit from all those people that actually never maybe reach a lender, okay? They are interested, but never ever reach a lender. And, and we are also um, integrated with um, Citadel um, for all, um, employment data um, uh, aspects. We are um, intrinsic for all of the part of the um, digital identity. And with a uh, member pass that is part of CUNA Mutual, we are um, working or integrating to be able to have uh, share credentials among um, ourselves. With that, um, I don't know how we are with time. I do have a, a small um, recorded demo. Um, I don't know if you want you guys want to um, open up for questions first, and then I do the demo, or how do you want to um, move forward? Um, Maria, I, I do have a question. I think there may be a couple questions. So I love the idea of eliminating bias with that token. Um, but my question is, for a first-time home buyer, that makes a lot of sense. But what if I am a seasoned real estate investor and I'm looking for more of a long-term relationship? It, uh, am I going to be one of your customers if I want to go buy multiple properties? So one of my questions, how long are you guys going to retain my information? Two, would you guys be able to help a seasoned buyer 
or a real estate investor with multiple transactions, because I can definitely see the business case for a first time buyer. You would really expedite the process, help educate them. But what about a seasoned buyer? Okay, so um, um, I am not, so the, uh, yeah, I, I'm not a C level, right? But um, I can tell you that uh, our current focus is especially for um, minorities and especially in first time home buyers because it's, it, okay. and it's where there's a potential, uh, there's a market potential that they're, they're, they're not being reached. Okay, so um, that is where we're currently more focused at helping out, uh, okay. which doesn't okay. mean when. So right now we're we're more focused on that, which doesn't mean that we might not we're not we're not looking at the rest of the ecosystem nor at the rest of the process because you could say oh you're talking only about origination and there's also a different in, in the servicing and whatever and yes there there's uh, so one of the good things is there's a lot of room for growth. Yeah. Uh, right. So, so yeah. it's not saying that we're not going to grow, but you to be able to run, you first have to start walking. We're trying to walk first and get that straight and then move on to the, the next step. OK, thank you. That makes perfect sense. I, I, I'd like to jump in here real quick. So this is Angel Alban, Maria. Great job. And I just want to tell you that, you know, one of the top agenda items for all banks, not just in the U.S., but around the world is financial inclusion. So I just want to take this opportunity to recognize you and Home Lending Pal for really, really looking at how, what type of solutions banks and organizations can, can, can take and think about and how they can expand their systems and how they can partner with you or whatever it may be to really address financial inclusion. So thank you very much. I found this very inspiring. Back to you, Marvin. Yeah, absolutely. I, I definitely reiterate what Angel said. That was a fantastic job. I think you guys are doing great. Were, were there any other questions from uh, the audience? Because we do have time to go through the, your demonstration, Maria. But if there are there any other questions? And feel hey, free for the group, as, Mari, as Maria goes through her demo, you can also drop questions into the chat as well. But we'll do a little bit more Q&A after the demo, too. I think Lucas, you had a question. Yeah, hey guys, uh, joined a little bit late, uh, Lucas Whaley. Um, to kind of piggyback on Marvin's question, Maria, when I was just seeing like, you know, thinking about the this applied to a real estate investor, obviously multiple transactions over time, and the the trick there kind of being there's a lot of pricing consideration to the level of experience of that investor, and that follows them through all transactions. So. Uh, like I said, just kind of a consideration piggybacking on what Marvin brought up, but uh, very interesting overall. There's and there's different, like for example, um, in some communities, so you might be thinking of, okay, no, when someone goes and buys a house, it's only just me. And in some minorities, it's not just me. They've got four or different, or five different salary earners that are living in the same house that are going to live in that other house that they all form and, 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 and though if you if were able to present those types of loans, that's only not just one person that's signing the loan. It's there's a group of people that are justifying that loan. And usually it's, it's harder. So it's natural for, um, you, you know, the human being is usually tries to go for the easiest thing, right? And, and not the, the most, something that's a bit more, it takes a bit more work. So if we're able to present that situation as easy, then, Okay, there's no one's going to um, not want to service them, right? Um, and currently, it's kind of like, okay, yes, oh, but it's kind of like, oh, this is going to take a lot more time. And people aren't interested. And it's not because it's just because of it's more work. And we, we naturally shy away from more work, right? It, 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 it's kind of hard. Um, going to a, a seasoned investor, the, the, or a real estate investor, the, problems or the, um, the the challenges not the problems the challenges that they are faced with are completely different from when it's uh, a, a home buyer right so it, the platform would probably have to adapt in, in, in another perspective you know because it's a completely different user uh, okay. I see a question 
Uh, there was a, a comment. Yes, from consider Steve the Williams. household income. Yes, Steve, they consider the household income. I'm not saying that they don't, but if if, if it, when you have to consider the household income, if it's if this, it was this high of a pieces of paper, and you have to when, when it was just one person, when you have to consider the household income, that goes up a, a, a bit more, right? So it's so not that ever the same if if the uh, folder that you're going to look through is small or is big, right? It, it's kind of like oh. Um, so let me share now. Let me see if. Oh, Murray, did you want to share your demo? Is that what you're yes. going through? Yes, okay. I'm awesome. looking for <laughs> got a, several, a lot of screens <laughs> open. I was trying to find the right one. Okay, so. There's, um, there isn't any um, sound to this. So what you're gonna see is uh, a, a user, someone that has already signed up to the platform login. This is in our test environment. So the data here that we're seeing is not um, um, real data. So here we can see that this is George Sewell. He's a first time home buyer. He isn't a milita military veteran. He's looking for a primary home. So he has already here saved some homes that he was interested in, um, all of them in Kentucky. Um, so we're gonna see that he um, is going to choose one of these homes and he is going to be presented here with a list of, these are the lenders. And this is the other thing, right? Because when you, oh, okay, I'm, I wanna buy a home, who, should I ask or who should I present an application form for the mortgage to? And that's another big issue for, for, for a home buyer. So the, the idea here is to be able to let him know according to which is the best loan product that maps or that matches to what the home and his conditions are, who are those uh, lenders that can, that in his area, offer uh, um, mortgages, okay, or loan applications. Maria, while you're on that slide really quick, um, the mortgage score column, uh, how do you guys actually determine that mortgage score, the 76% that we see in that example? Um, that's a good question. Um, that is, uh, we have uh, an, uh, an AI team that we have um, certain models that um, we are using and that we are um, updating that are the one that feed into that, that score. The exact um, algorithm behind it, I, I, I mean, it's not my area of expertise. Thanks. You're welcome. So here you can see that these are the different um, pieces of documentation that you are going to be asked for. Um, this is going to vary according to your type of employment um, and, uh, and your, if you're married or not, that kind of thing, right? But these are the minimum that you would be asked for. And here we can see that they already have two that they've completed. These two are um, uh, digital credentials. And we're gonna see, okay, these are the credentials. I'm going to um, submit this to the, the lenders, to this lender that I selected. And we're going to go to the, and we're gonna be able to monitor the progress of these. So these are lenders that I'm contacting for the first time, right? Um, we currently only um, allow on the platform for you to be able to contact um, at the most three lenders. Uh, and, um, and receive an, uh, um, a, a quote from them, right? So here we're asking the, the questions about um, your race, your sex, and your ethnicity. We're gonna see here, your race, your sex, and your ethnicity. These values here are, are what the um, government regulation says that you have to ask for. So that's just following government um, regulation. 
And here we are storing that information, but we are not sharing it with, um, with the lenders. And once that is um, stored, we can um, go, we'll go to the monitor progress, and then we'll be able to see which, which, with which lenders you can have applied to. And you can always opt out or um, which is, okay, I don't want to pursue uh, um, this with anyone else. And here you can see that we don't let you apply for any more um, loans until you've received uh, feedback from the ones you currently have. Now, if we access it as a lender, I'm going to see the different, these are the new funding requests that I received. So here I can see the one that I received that I made just made with for 89K. I'll be able to, um, the lender would be able to see the information about the that new request. He can accept that request. He'll be able to see the credentials. This is what I was saying, the information that was um, shared. In this scenario, we're sharing all of the um, information, but here um, you could only share that, hey, they have over, um, 10K, for example, and, not, and you wouldn't know exactly how many, much money they had in the account. That kind of thing can be done. So he, they've just accepted the, the, the lender has just accepted that um, request. And um, when they um, go in, they're going to, now they have to, and so in the process, once you accept, you propose, okay, based on this information, hey, we can um, give you this amount of money. So, and once you propose the amount, then the uh, borrower is the, uh, is the um, actor that has to decide if they can they accept that proposal or not. And um, once they accept the proposal, you have to wait for the purchase agreement, right? To be able to move forward in the process. And here we can see all of the uh, different uh, loan applications that this, bar, uh, that this lender has and be able to um, uh, view details related with that. And here we can see that there you are in pre-qualification, okay? But we would be able to view more in-depth detail about this um, loan. And that's the uh, short recorded demo that, um, I, that um, I wanted to share. Yeah, that's excellent, Maria. This is Angel. I just wanted to share just for the audience, uh, the MBA reported that um, their purchase originations for 2022 are actually going to increase, right? So we know that the volumes, the pipelines are going down, but purchases are actually going up. They're projecting 1.7 trillion for next year. Um, roughly, historically, it's always been about a third. I think it's itching up a little bit more than a third, 34, 35% of purchases in any given year are first time home buyers. So we're talking about roughly 600,000, uh, I'm sorry, 600 billion in, 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 in first time buyer originations across the US. And um, again, you know, we, we don't know uh, what the average balances are, but just a, a rough one, you know, um, let's say 300,000 somewhere. Around, we're talking about one, 1 1.7 million loans, new loans or new property sales across the US. So that is a very significant number. I know that lenders are actively working on their purchase strategies. Uh, LOs are retooling from refi to purchase, building those relationships with their realtor, realtor partners. And a tool like this is just uh, unbelievable. So back to you, Maria, and, and uh, anybody else who have any questions or comments. Maria, as, as you were going through the demo, I, I couldn't help but think back to in for somehow I'm on mortgage lending TikTok, and it, it's all of these TikToks that show uh, or loan officers talking about all the mistakes that home buyers are making while they're purchasing a home, like going out and buying a brand new car or submitting their applications to multiple lenders. I, I think your tool is, is fantastic for that type of consumer, and, and it really those TikToks underscore just 
the lack of knowledge for a large portion of the population and that this would be very helpful. I mean, if they don't have an informed loan origination officer, this is a fantastic tool for them. So I, I think it definitely helps to fill a need. Yes, yes. Um, 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 we are receiving, so there, there are different nuances in what, um, how a, a borrower can present himself, right? So, and it's always constantly, we're constantly updating it because there's different situations that we have to consider um, to be able to say, okay, well, why can't you apply for a loan? Okay, th this is the reason why you're not applying and be able to incorporate that into our models. Yeah. But it, it's, it's um, personally, I find it, uh, uh, it's something nice to be able to be in a way, we're working with new technology and yet we're also helping people out, right? Um, so it's twofold. We have another call that's starting in a couple of minutes. Uh, so uh, it, if you guys do have any other questions, uh, I, I'm not sure, Maria, if you'll be able to get your audio back, please feel free to uh, reach out to um, Maria and we'll go ahead and include her uh, email address in the chat. Yeah, Maria actually posted her email chat a few okay. moments ago, so it's available for everybody. Can you okay. hear me now? Okay, yeah, now we can hear you. Yeah, I lost audio. At one point, I even lost, I couldn't hear you, Marvin. Okay. Um, I, don't know, I can't remember what we were talking about. Okay. Um, okay. Well, we, we only have two minutes, and then there's another hyperledger call uh, that's coming on board. So. If there aren't any other questions, um, we could just go to the, the last slide. And thank you very much, Maria. This, this has been fa a fantastic presentation. Definitely appreciate the information. I, I think you guys have a, a great product and everyone please feel free to reach out yeah. to Maria. And Marvin, you're not currently presenting, so. Okay, so let me go ahead and share my screen. Okay, so the last thing that I did wanna mention is um, for a, a future presentation, we do have someone that um, is interested in speaking. For those of you that are members of the Mortgage Bankers Association or follow their uh, Newslink publications, there was an excellent article this week called Digital Transformations Meet the Metaverse by Mark P. D'Angelo. Uh, where Mark discusses the challenges of financial institutions facing and understanding benefiting from the evolution to the metaverse. So I've invited Mark to attend. Um, we're trying to work out the logistics now. He may be able to present to us in March or it may be a follow-up meeting. So we'll try and send out the link to uh, his, uh, his article as well. But I just wanted to mention that to you guys. And if there's any other topics that you guys would like to see. I mean, please feel free if there are speakers, if there are topics that you guys would like to talk about, that let us know. We want this to be as interactive as possible and make sure that we're, we're benefiting the community. Um, James, Maria, Angel, anything you guys wanted to add before we sign off? And just a quick thank you to Maria for taking the time to present to everybody the um, Home Lending Pal solution. Thank you very much, Maria, for your time. Yeah, definitely. Thank you again, Maria. Thank you to everyone. Have a great day. We'll see you at the next meeting. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.